Race Bias and Anthony. I'm a landscape contractor. I started my business when I was 17 years old with $50 in my pocket, going door to door with neighbors and saying, may I leave you with a copy of my landscape flyer? I can clean your gutter. I can mow your lawn. You get the idea. And I worked hard. The first three or four years, I did all the work myself. You know, self-motivated, had to get out of you know, bed and show up to the job on time and, and worked hard. And I started at $10 an hour and you know, slowly worked up from there. And it takes a big effort to grow a business. And um, if you have ever been an employer, and possibly if you're an employee, you know that not every employee is the same. Um, if I could have met lots of me's, I would have hired all of them because I never lied. I worked hard. I really wanted to please the client. And I wore my earphones all the time trying to learn and grow. And so I did. You know, I got, you know, I didn't have money to invest in courses and stuff. So I went to the library and I, I got cassette tapes on how to learn and grow. And Nightingale Conant was a great producer of media. And so uh, I grew in leaps and bounds, you know, six hours a day listening to courses and how to provide better service and all that. Now, I've never, no, I shouldn't say that. I've met one employee in my life that had that kind of drive and initiative and dedication and liked working and all of that. Uh, is the best employee and he's got a job for life as far as I'm concerned. And... Um, I've met, you know, numerous employees, you know, that s slowed down working as soon as I wasn't there, you know, you get the idea. And, um, I also gathered a very tiny pocket of stereotypical data over time because, um, yeah, I've worked in several countries, I've hired in several countries, you know, probably hired three or 400 people over the years. And uh, what I noticed, there was a period of time when I was using labor ready. Now, this is a very low end temp service, um, but it's the temp service around the Bay Area that someone like myself could use. And they'd send someone out you know, for minimum of four hours, et cetera. And they were based in Oakland. And I, uh, I was using them because I needed temp labor and I was trying to stay away from undocumented. I was trying to stay legal, basically. That was the only reason. There's lots of um, questionably legal Latinos that I love working with. Um, but I wanted to be more, you know, more, more legal, basically. So I... And in Oakland, all, well, not all, in Oakland, I would say 70% or more of the people at Labor Ready that they would send out were African American. And I had a terrible time with them. And I'd always had great luck with the Latinos. And so I asked, you know, do you have any Latinos? And when I say I had a terrible time, um, they sent me out 10 different African-Americans in the you know, 20s to 40 you know, age range. And, um, and there's a little bit of a style clash. I mean, this is how I grew up dressing. And so, you know, the baseball hats on angles and earrings and uh, you know, gold chains or, you know, pants falling down. This, you know, I, I don't relate to that as being, you know, how are you going to work with your pants falling down? You know, it's like it, 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 style doesn't come into it. It's a practical thing. You got you know, got to hold a pick, you know. And so, you know, there's a style clash. Um, and there was also a, a language thing in terms of, um, I remember being uh, interrogated by, you know, like five or six of these uh, African-Americans in a row. 
and it didn't seem like they were interested in landscape design or anything. Um, it's just every time I went to get some work done, uh, they they would say, so boss, uh, what's the plan? So why are you putting this over here? Why are you putting this over there? And the only common denominator that I could come up with as to why all this was going on was the more they could distract me from my work and keep me chatting away, uh, the less picking and shoveling they had to do. And I hadn't run into this with more than 150 Latinos and I was running into it, you know, 80% of the time with African Americans. So I called Labor Ready and I said, do you have any Latinos? I, I don't want any more African Americans. And they said, well, that's racist. We can't do it on the basis of race. And I said, I, I have nothing against African Americans, nothing. But I need to get my job done. And I don't want to waste their time because I'm going to send them back and I don't want to waste your time. And I've, I've just, I've never run into this. So, you know, how, how do you talk about that? And, and I said, I, you know, and I think it was an African-American on, on the phone. Yeah. You know, it's an Oakland office. And so this is a very politically incorrect type of arena. Um, I have sympathy. I have, you know, more and more understanding of the, you know, the race impact, et cetera, of, of uh, you know, the last few hundred years of American history. And it wasn't, you know, there were, there were three levels of, of issue. You know, one, the, 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 the level of, uh, well, I would say that the, the, for me, it would be rudeness, but just the whole attitude of etc. Clients were a bit uncomfortable. You know, there was the dress and pants falling down issue. And then there was, they weren't doing much work. And then the issue was, uh, I, the worst thing of all, though, was I don't like to be rude. And when I say here, trench this line and talk to me when it's done and they start coming over and chatting about everything imaginable and not doing the work, it's, it's you know, that's what you're there for, to trench this, you know, this, this trench. And so um, I feel comfortable with my little pocket of data, you know, 150 Latinos, uh, 20 white people, I, you know, I feel comfortable saying that in my limited experience, my, the first group I'd rather hire for landscaping is Latinos. And I even feel comfortable from my little sampling saying that uh, people from Guatemala seem to be a little bit harder working than people from Mexico. Though that was, you know, that's a harder sampling. But based on my sampling, if I had to roll the dice and pick randomly, I'd first pick someone from uh, Guatemala, then I would pick someone from Mexico, then I would pick a white guy, and I'd pick guys in every case, um, and then I would pick uh, a an African-American man, and then I would pick an African-American woman. The, there's, there's a tension, meaning the, the, the kind of crew feeling of, uh, I'm an impatient person when I'm trying to manage a lot of stuff and, you know, delivery is coming and the client wants to talk right then and then the rototiller breaks down. So, um, I need to be able to be efficient and like go go dig that hole and talk to me later. Not now. Uh, you you do this. You stop. Just don't do anything until I get back here. Here, I need to be able to do that and not worry about ruffling feelings because that's what it takes to manage five people in a chaotic situation. And so that's 
who I become to succeed and deliver. I get my jobs done early. I get them done on, so I get them done early and I get them done on budget. Um, and that's ultimately there to serve the client. So that's my pecking order from that little experience. And, um, and why? Well, men have generally been both stronger than women and less likely to take offense. So there's so I'm gonna statistically get 50% more out of trenching, etc. Statistically, I am not talking about the anomalies at all. And that has to be looked at on an individual basis. But statistically, if I have to if I have to pick someone I don't know and say, could you send someone, I'd say send a male, you know, person from um, you know, from, from one of the, the, the Latin countries as a statistic. And then, of course, you try it out because you get the drunk and the addict and stuff. So it's, it's, it's by no means, you know, black or white. But then we come to Anthony. Now, Anthony was the one success story of Labor Ready Oakland. And boy, was he a success. Um, African-American, never wanted to talk. Boy, was he amazing. Uh, and, you know, because he didn't get, he wouldn't get lost going to the job site. He was incredible. So I gave him, you know, I gave him his labor ready salary plus, you know, some hefty tips in, in uh, you know, so he, he'd have higher take home pay. Um, and I would ask for him, is Anthony there? Is Anthony there? Can you send Anthony? And that, really became, and not surprisingly, because I didn't always need him, not surprisingly, someone else found he was a great hire and he no longer went to the labor-ready temp pool. And he wasn't there anymore. But it got to the point where I stopped using the whole temp agency because it just seemed like a terribly uncomfortable and inefficient thing to know that 80% of the people that were showing up were going to be African Americans. Uh, Eighty percent of them were going to be out of shape, I meaning they weren't going to labor ready because, you know, they loved working out every day and all that. Some of them would they just show up for a day, like, and and labor ready's policy was we'll take whoever shows up in the morning and kind of send them out. You know, there's not necessarily any training, any being in shape, anything like that. And it's, it's heavy work. And so, uh, so that's a story that when I brought it up to a few African-American uh, women who I was talking with, it was very clear they found it offensive. Um, and I don't believe in having secrets. And I'm not making a judgment about these people as human beings. I'm making a judgment based on competency to do a specific job. And I'm doing it. It wasn't something that I came in with saying, you know, I want to avoid uh, white people and end up with uh, Guatemalans. Um, it's just uh, we all move in the direction of what's going to deliver the most value towards our goals with the least amount of hassle, bother, irritation, etc. And there are differences. There are differences in gender. There are differences in culture. There are differences in work habit and exercise habit. Um, for whatever reasons, the Latinos seem pretty in shape, more so than me. I mean, uh, you know, they got so good that I got out of shape because when I had to do it all myself for the first, you know, years of the business, learning every detail, etc., when I had to do it all myself, I had to be in top shape. But when I've got a great crew, I don't need to as much. And so, um, so this is, the, so the distinctions that make sense to me 
around this is historically, I have the most empathy for African Americans. I think it would have been absolute hell for me to be born as an African American, and we don't get to decide how we're born. And so as a country, I think we owe it to ourselves to as much as possible acknowledge and understand the impact of, you know, on our own psyches and on the people that we have abused. Because slavery is an abuse, and it is an abuse on both people. It's not, the pain isn't equal because we're, we're very dissociative from our, our being. But to treat someone like a slave, a certain part of our soul dies, a certain part of our humanity dies. We insult the dignity of our children, of our country and ourselves, as well as the people that we abuse and use violence on. So we are a profoundly abusive culture in a racist way. And the amount of latent resistance and stuff like that shows that we are all capable of being profoundly dehumanizing towards ourselves and others. And that's horrific. And on the level of kind of spirituality and beingness, every human being is equally valuable. And on the level of gender, of course, every man and woman is equally valuable. But every man and woman and every person and every demographic and every neighborhood is not equally competent at a specific thing. Some of that is for body reasons. Some of that is mentality. Some of it is culture. I mean, if you can't move a shovel more than three times without having to bring up a new topic of conversation, that's not competent. When the goal is to measure how many shovelfuls can you, get, can you move in an hour? Well, as an employer, looking at the pile of dirt, you notice this person moved half the pile in an hour, and these other three people moved 20% in the same time, and I'm paying them all the same hourly rate. Nope. Those three are going back. The person is working hard. I'm going to see if I can find another one of those, and he's getting the job as long as he wants. You know, and that's that's the value that comes on a competent level. Uh, and I think, you know, while there's a little bit of social ambiguity in things like labor and stuff, uh, if your daughter is under the surgeon table and you can pick a, uh, you know, an, an untrained, you know, an untrained white person who kills half their patients or a another one that kills only 20% or this other of whatever race that, you know, just nails it every single time, you're going to go with the person that nails it. So that's me as I intersect with uh, stereotypes, racism, bias, spirituality, competency, being a business owner and being a human being. Thank you.